here we go again. I've got another boat project. Come along and find out what I'm up to this time. Hey everybody, this is Captain Frank with the ship's log on the boat again today for yet another project. Uh, springtime is project time on your boat. You want to get everything on your boat working just fine so you're going to have an absolutely wonderful summer season. That's what I'm doing right here. Today we are working on the generator remote start. Um, I've had a problem actually for the last few years where sometimes the remote start switch that's in the cabin doesn't always work. And when that happens, I have to get down in the engine compartment to manually start the generator down there. And that can be a hassle. So I learned that actually on a lot of older boats like this one, uh, they installed the wire for the remote start and they really should have used a heavier gauge wire for the distance run that it is going from the generator all the way back to where the switch is. And after a while they just wear down and they don't always work reliably. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to install a new remote start switch, but I'm not gonna run it all the way into the cabin. I'm actually gonna put it in a cabinet up here on the deck so it makes it really easy just to open that cabinet, hit the switch, start the generator, and I don't have to get down into the engine compartment to do so. So, uh, it should be a pretty simple fix. Couple things I have here. First of all, there's the actual remote start switch that I'm going to install. This is literally made for ignition switches. Um, got this off of uh, off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description so you can actually find out where it is. I do have the wiring that I'm going to use. Most starter circuits require a 14 gauge wire. I decided to go a little bit thicker. Got a 12 gauge wire just to make sure that we don't have any issues there. So I've got that, and then of course. I have all of the different connectors. Of course, I'm not going to need that many connectors, but I ordered the uh, connectors so I can make sure that I can have the connectors for connecting to the switch, to the starter, to the battery, and so on and so forth. And of course, I got various tools that I'm going to need in order to do the job. So let's get in the engine compartment and get things started. So we're down here in the engine compartment. There is my generator. The starter is right here solenoid right on the end of the starter so that's where my positive connection is going to go the batteries are right down here actually let me go ahead and pull this off here at my battery this particular battery right here is the battery for the generator so that's the one that we are going to be connecting to and what we're going to be doing is we're going to run a line from the battery around the path, up the side, and into this cabinet. And we're going to do the same thing from the starter into this cabinet so we can put our button there and just hit the button there anytime we want to get started. Now, before we get started, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we disconnect the battery because as we're doing this we don't want the battery to be connected we don't want the system need to be potentially charged and we end up creating some sparks down here so that's the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect that battery okay so the battery is disconnected the first thing I'm gonna do now or the second thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take my wire I'm gonna fish it down inside the cabinet down into the engine compartment and find a nice safe path to run all along here to get to the battery itself. Then I can set my terminals up, I can secure it there, and uh, that'll be one side of the switch. The next thing I'll do is do the same thing, except I'll be running another wire from the solenoid, which is behind me, that's what I showed you earlier, running that up to the switch as well, uh, and then I'll connect everything together and then we'll see what we have. So let's do that. 
The starter and solenoid on my boat's generator is a pretty typical setup. The starter is mounted to the generator and the solenoid is mounted on top of the starter. The solenoid itself is actually a switch, but it's designed to carry high current loads. It switches on and off the electrical connection between the battery and the starter to allow the starter to start the motor. The ignition switch simply activates the solenoid. Without the solenoid, you would have to have really thick cabling going all the way up to your ignition switch. Okay, so now I've run my two wires. I've run both wires up into this cabinet here. One of them is going to go down, like I said, to the solenoid on my starter. The other one's going to go to the battery. So the wires are run. Now what I'm going to do is just take some zip ties and secure them in the engine compartment so they're not flopping around or they can't move around and so on and so forth. Just a good thing to do to kind of help keep it protected and make sure it doesn't end up going somewhere it shouldn't go. So, it's going to take a few minutes to do that. Then, we'll put the connectors on and we'll hook everything else. Okay, so, we've got the wires all zip tied in so they're nice and secure. Uh, the next thing I'm doing now is I am actually putting the connectors on the ends and of course I'm making sure that I pick the, the best connector right size for whatever type terminal that it's going on. So I've actually already done one of the connectors for my switch that has been crimped on there. I am going to cut my wire for the other side of the switch. I'm going to strip it. And I'm going to put that one on there as well. Yep. Put that on there. Let's give it a good crimp. Nice and tight, here we go. So we're gonna do the same thing with the connector that goes onto the battery and the connector that goes onto the solenoid. The next thing we'll do after that is these types of connectors have a, a shrink plastic on them. So you hit it with a heat gun, it shrinks it down so it makes it nice and airtight and also makes it watertight so you don't get any rust up in there. So we'll do that after we finish putting all the connectors on. Okay, so all the connections are on. So now we're going with the heat gun and we're simply just shrinking that plastic uh, around the connections really so we'll have a really nice good uh, moisture-free connection there. So we'll get these, these two over here. And up a little bit there. There we go. Takes a little while to get it heated up, and once it gets heated up, it, it shrinks right on there. Nice. Let me get this one. That one's shrinking out pretty good. And we got one more back here on the starter solenoid.
Okay, so we've got everything hooked up. We've got the switch hooked up over here. I haven't mounted the switch yet, so it's not mounted, but it is connected, so we can actually test this and see if it's working. I've got it connected uh, to the battery. I've got the other one connected to the solenoid on the generator. So I guess now it's just, let's see if it works. So uh, let's give this a shot. every single time I want to start my generator so that makes me really happy so yeah it works well there you have it I've got a new ignition switch installed for my generator and it really didn't take that much time and the parts that I needed really weren't that expensive either I could have tried to replace the original circuit going all the way into the cabin, but based on the way the wiring is run, that would have been absolutely insane to try to do that. I think this option is going to work really nicely for me, and as you can see, it didn't take a whole lot of effort to do it. Thanks again for watching my channel, and if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing because it really does help me. And if you haven't liked the video, please take a minute or so to do that as well. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.